Welcome back to the Bearded Gearhead channel. Today we have drug out another project that I've bought. I'm going to show you some footage here of uh, the day I went and looked at this tractor. This is a 1938 KCC. It's not ran in 10 years and we're going to try and get it running today. I've already done a little bit of work to it. I'll go over what I've done and uh, go over a few more checks that we're going to do. But uh, here's some footage right quick of where I went and originally saw it the first day and uh, when we loaded it up to bring it home. If you like what you see on our channel, please take a moment and hit the pause button and reach down and hit that subscribe button to help our little channel grow. Thank you. This is a 1938 Case, J.I. Case CC. These old tractors are pretty cheap. I probably gave more for this one than I should have, but it was close, which saved on gas. But I'm going to go over what I've done to this tractor already, and then we're going to do a few more checks on it today. Uh, go over some uh, operation operations out of the maintenance manual and out of the uh, operator's manual today and see if we can get it started up. I went ahead and drained the oil and changed the oil in it. When I drained the oil, it was just nasty and it was coming out in clumps. There was some water in it, but I think it was just condensation where it sat for so long. Uh, always need to make sure you go through and do checks, check all your fluids. Need to try and get an operator's manual so that you know how to properly operate the tractor. There's still some things on this tractor that I don't know what they do. If you look here, this is your oil drain. These are your high and low fills. I had to take these inspection plates off the other day because the book tells you that if the tractor's been sitting for a while, to uh, you need to go in here and lube certain points. As soon as I bought this tractor, I went ahead and bought an operator's manual for it and a service manual. I try and do that with every tractor I bring in. But one of the one of the things that did mention under the other day is when you drop the oil on it and get ready to start a tractor back up that's not ran in a while is that you need to come in here and take this cover off and I am having to take both covers off. They got brass washers behind them and the gaskets didn't tear on me the other day so I actually got lucky on that. Not to mention that the oil level doesn't come up high enough to these covers anyway. It will sling some. But this cover came off. The oil pump is sitting right here and the book instructs you to reach in and actually oil the top of that oil pump shaft. But this oil pan this oil pan was filthy. It had all kinds of trash in it where it had been sitting for so long. I went ahead and took both covers off, took a bunch of ether and gas, cleaned up the pan, tried to get the screen as clean as I could without taking the pan off. And by the time it's said and done, everything was running out clean and clear on it. And I went ahead and put the covers back on it and filled the oil up on it. One good reason to buy an operator's manual for these old tractors is because these old tractors had a lot of features on it that haven't been seen in a long time. This is a 1938 model. Back when they used multi-fuels, fuels that we don't use to run equipment on anymore. Me and my infinite wisdom saw the fuel tank here. You can see there is a lid here and a lid there. And I thought, well, that was pretty smart. They put a little small reserve tank on this thing so that you run off the main tank when you're out in the field and if you're in out of gas, you switch it over to reserve and get back home. That's not what it's for. After reading the uh, operator's manual, the main primary tank up here is actually for kerosene and this tank is for gasoline. This tractor was originally designed to start on gasoline, warm up to, I think, 200 degrees Fahrenheit on the engine. Then you switch the valves and turn the tractor over to kerosene and it is designed to work on kerosene. It is also apparently very inefficient where kerosene does not burn clean, I guess as clean as gasoline does, because if you read in the operator's manual, you actually get instructed like every day or every week to go in and drain off so much oil out of it because they're accounting for fuel dilution in the oil. That's how inefficiently they burnt. 
but of course I'm not going to run kerosene in this. I did put gas in this tractor already the other day in the main tank. I have not tried the little tank. I'm going to probably try it today. Uh, the tank is leaking. You can see here on the tractor what little gas I put in it the other day is leaking out. The tank has already been tanks already had a kit put in it it's already been sealed but apparently it's got a uh, spot on the bottom that's come through the outside in this is your oil filter oil housing your air comes in up through your breather down through here and it gives you instructions on the side warning remove reservoir daily clean and fill to i can't tell what that last word is anyway it tells you to clean it daily and fill it back up the oil so i went ahead and pulled this off there is a uh, turn wheel right here Take that loose, this bracket slides out. I refilled it, took it out, cleaned it out, and uh, refilled it with oil so the uh, breather's ready to go too. Fuel bowl was empty on this thing already, so I think the previous owner, before he passed away and before he quit filling with this tractor, had went ahead and had done it right. He turned all the fuel off, ran the carb out of fuel before, uh, before he shut it down. So I'm hoping that uh, we can run fuel up here to the carburetor and everything will be all right and she'll hopefully fire up for us. I'm going to get uh, some tools out, do some more checks on the rear end, check and see uh, how dirty the clutch housing oil. The clutch housing on this tractor actually shares oil with the motor oil. So much motor oil actually laps over into the clutch housing, so all that clutch debris actually gets tied up in, uh, in your motor oil. The drain intervals on these tractors are, are pretty often because they know how dirty the oils will get in it the way it's designed. I think it's uh, oil change in these things is for every 80 hours, I think according to the operator's manual but i'm gonna go through and do some more checks try and check some uh some grease points and oil points this tractor uses a lot of oil for lubrication on grease fittings instead of uh actual grease i'm gonna go through and check some of those and uh, put some fuel in this tractor today and see if we can start it on the rear right hand side of the tractor is your transmission fuel plug and level plug we're gonna take this plug out right quick and check the fluid levels in it try and get all the dirt away from it Spray some cleaner on it, that way you don't get any dirt down in it if you can. These old tractors do not have filters on hardly anything. The only thing they've got is either an oil bath or steel wool. Take us a stick, see if there's any oil in it. And there is visible oil, it's a little low. I think the book called for a uh, viscosity of an oil of like 150. But it's got enough oil in it to do what we're gonna do. It is not dry, so it'll still sling enough to do a test run today. While we're back here, I'll go ahead and check our PTO. I didn't read up on the fuel and drain procedure, but since I see a high and a low plus, we'll go ahead and uh, check this and dip in and see if there's any oil in it. Oil is up to the plug on the PTO. These old tractors are chain drive. If you look back here on the rear axle housing, you'll see each ha axle housing where the bolt holes are, are slotted. Of course, this one's all the way back already. These are actually adjustments for the internal drive chains on these tractors. These have drive trains like a, uh, like a wheel type skid steer has or a grader. These are all the way back, which means if man was going to use this for any heavy production other than tractor shows, you'd have to go through here and take a link out of the chain and replace the chains. As the chains wear out, you're supposed to check these. There's an interval in the surface in the operator's manual for that also. Uh, but every so often, you're supposed to go through there and pull a cover off, I think, one of the covers, and reach in there and check your chains, and then uh, slide the axle housing accordingly to the proper tension and tighten it all back up. The tractor has a magneto. The magneto adjustment is here, and over here you have your part brake. Of course, your belt pulley down here. This tractor is a hand clutch, just like any old, old tractor, like some of your John Deere's. Um, pull it back, engages it. Here is your gear selector in the middle, right under your steering column. In between your clutch and your shifter, is your throttle. Here is a kill switch for the mag, and I'm not sure if this is factory or not. Somebody can chime in on that. And of course, here's the toolbox. This is a KCC 4205-775. It's got the original tag still on it with the original toolbox still. Seat does not have the proper spring on it, I don't think. I'll have to read. If y'all know what this is down here, how that works, let me know. I have not messed with the PTO on this thing yet. Seat side has a foot brake down here. 
over here, I'm thinking maybe the PTO engagement. Here is your gasoline fuel pet cock, and then there's a pet cock up front for the kerosene. There's a piece missing here. Again, somebody put in the comments if you know what's supposed to be there. This one is missing. Maybe for radiator shutters. I don't, I'm not sure. Choke for your carburetor is in front where you're gonna be starting it at. Right here, if you've never seen an old case tractor, this is actually your oil pressure indicator. When this tractor fires up and the oil pressure is generated, this little plunger on the end will pop out and that lets you know if you've got oil pressure or not. This tractor has got a heated intake manifold and apparently these are notorious for getting water in them, rusting and cracking. This one's no different, it has cracked all the pieces. I have found a machine shop somewhere that makes these in reproduction style. Here is your hand crank for starting the tractor. I topped it off with water the other day, but it's got a little bit of coolant in it. Over here is your magneto, and then your engine oil fill. Uh, like I said, a lot of these bearings on these old tractors were lubed by grease, and it's a paste grease, not like the normal grease we use. But these little caps in here, you take off, and there's a little bitty cartridge inside of it, or a little bitty hole, and you fill that plumb up heaping full of that paste type grease and then you put your cap back on it you can see there you got the light take that cap and your little hole up here i cleaned it out the other day i've got to find some paste grease and clean it up and uh, repack it you fill those plumb full and then ever so often you come out here and give it one full turn and what that does is that slowly pushes grease down into that port and keeps that burn for whatever it is you're lubricating, it keeps that bearing packed in grease. The drive shaft for your magneto actually is manually lubricated just by pouring oil in through the engine oil fill. So every so often you're supposed to go in and add a little bit more engine oil in there to lubricate that drive line. Of course, like I said, your water pump bearing is manually lubricated. I had the hood and the valve cover off this the other day and went ahead because the instruction manual tells you about once a week i think or once every two weeks to pull the valve cover off this tractor take kerosene while the unit is running and wash down all the valve guides and then manually go back and oil the whole top end of the engine this engine does not have pressurized oil feed up to the top of it so no lubrication is pumped to the top end of this engine so the operator has to go through and keep it clean, wash the valve guides down, and manually lubricate all the rocker arms and the valve guides once a week or every three days, I believe. Again, that info is in the operator and maintenance manual, and it's worth its weight in gold because you can destroy one of these old tractors a very, very short amount of time if you're out there doing long tractor drives or parade hauls or still using it out in the farm and you're not properly taking care of it. We'll go ahead and stick some fuel in this small tank back here. This is a uh, cheap Amazon or eBay electric fuel pump. They're awesome. For what they are, 15, 20 bucks, they are well worth their money. Cause you not make a mess with these. See how much is in the front tank still. <laughs> well, there's actually quite a bit in the front tank still. That leaked me somewhat seal itself off. We're reading the trusty operator's manual. The generational changes in these are amazing. Operator's manual nowadays, the big joke is tells you not to drink the fluid out of a battery or, or stupid stuff, not to drink coolant out of antifreeze or that a battery can shock you. These manuals tell you how, the operator's manual, not the service manual, tell you how to split the tractor, how to pull the valves down and lap the valves, how to ream the valves, all the stuff that most people have no idea how to do it nowadays. And this was average repairs for the average farmer back then. I've got the manual out and we're going to read through the starting procedure right quick. For those of you who may buy one and don't have a manual yet, it says uh, to start the engine, open the carburetor main jet one and a half turns counterclockwise from the closed position. Your main jet is this one down here. This is your fuel bowl drain. This is your main jet. So do not mess with this top jet up here, which is probably your air ratio adjustment screw. Set your throttle lever at about mid position. Pulling back on the throttle lever opens the throttle and feeds a heavier charge to the, to the engine. So again, here's our throttle lever. All the way forward is off. All the way back is wide open, so somewhere around halfway. Set the spark lever in one half advanced position. The spark lever is turned to the left to advance the spark 
and when turned to the right into a vertical position it cuts off the current and stops the engine again this is your spark lever down here so all the way to the left is run all the way to the right is off and you can see it's essentially straight up and down so to start it you need to be in about half position hold the choke rod out for one or two turns of the starting crank i've seen a lot of old tractors like this you take the hand crank you pull the choke out and you crank it once or anywhere from two to four times that draws fuel into the engine and then you use that to shut the choke back off but it says hold choke rod out for one or two turns of the starting crank release choke rod immediately after the engine starts when cranking in an engine the crank should be pulled upwards using the left hand and the choke is then easily accessible for the right hand it says that this is done the operator's cranking hand is in a position to avoid being struck by the starting crank if there is a reversal of the direction of the rotation of the engine old hand crank engines you all got to be careful with these because if they don't disengage a lot of them have disengagement mechanisms in them so it won't catch them but some of them don't and some of them don't work now that crank if that engine fires up that hand crank can come around and smack you in the arm or the hand and it'll break your arm so set spark lever in full position set throttle this is after it's running so release choke rod immediately after engine starts then set your spark lever in full advanced position that'll be all the way up to the left all the way over to the left set throttle so the engine runs about half normal speed and adjust carburetor needle valve until engine runs free and snappy so you got to tune it by ear that's your bottom main jet down here on the bottom again all right the rear tank does not work fuel was not coming out of it so i went back and turned the main tank on that i put fuel in the other day and uh, it took it a bit but as you can see we have fuel there we go fuel coming out of the carburetor all right we're gonna try this guys we'll turn front fuel pitcock on make sure that we are still getting fuel but we're gonna set the brake make sure the clutch is disengaged so we're in neutral right now throttle is somewhere around half set magneto so somewhere in the middle i'm not sure on our switch we'll get her hand crank out of the holder put the hand crank and the starting or the hand crank hole all the way through and engages on the flats and when you crank these you got to push in as you crank it some that's where that kick out is that safety kick out so i'm gonna mount the camera and let's see what we can do with this thing remember the choke has to be out for the first two to three cranks and then push it back in so let's try this fuel is on choke is out mag in half position it says left hand lift up with your left hand or we'll lift over whoa that's a good sign let's go ahead and put your choke in remember too guys gotta watch your oil pressure when it comes on let's see if it comes out i think it's gonna start if i can not get myself hurt here
we're trying to mount the camera up. Let's we'll see if he'll take gear and see if we can drive it. All right. Throttle. See if we can find the gear. Uh, here it is. One, two, here's reverse in the back, third up front. So let's put it in first. Get it some throttle. Of course, this is not live PTO. I'm gonna put some air in the front tire. I appreciate y'all coming along with me. I'm gonna go drive this thing around some more and try to get a little more footage of it and hopefully post it up too. And uh, hopefully she keeps running. But thank you all for coming along with me. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all. Thank you all.